expanding the economic base, diversifying economic base, um, encouraging vitality in downtown. And many of these are taken from our master plan, but adapted. Uh, affordable and work for, workforce housing. Is it contributing to a workforce housing? Uh, community and quality of life, especially the most vulnerable residents. So is this proposal going to contribute to the quality of life? Um, and then the second criteria was urgency, like how urgent a project is and what's at stake if you don't do it. That's something like what manager was saying. So not only looking at how it is, but if you don't do this or don't do anything, what is a consequence? And then we can prioritize based on importance and urgency. And the last is resources. What are the resources needed to complete the project, the funding, staff time, external consultants, other committees, nonprofits. So those would be the criteria that I think are important. When we... Thank you. Um, I'm hearing some similarities in, in many of these themes. Um, one of my strategies is um, effectively lobby the state for better um, better funding based on the state property uh, and the other higher ed institutions in the town. You all have mentioned the same things more articulately. Um, um, sort of reaching out to others to help pay for us. Again, federal loans, so to, to promote the home ownership um, opportunities that many people have already mentioned. And then my third was that we have a sustainable reparation program, which means that it is it can grow and build on itself <clears throat> um, over time. So it's not a one one time thing. Um, let's see, uh, some of the criteria before someone brings something forward to actually weigh the actions and and actually try to write down for themselves what the pros and cons would be of that uh, of that activity, that action, that motion, so that you think through, I think through, whoever thinks through um, it ahead of time and understand that there may be some opportunity for improvement uh, when you discover that that may be more cons than you originally thought in your excitement. Thank you. So mine was, um, I had a, how, how do we achieve looking at our uh, community or, or having more of a uh, global vision and how do we relate to the community? So one was, you know, understanding as probably most of us do that we are in a global community and, um, you know, just the realities of such um, and also with uh, consistency. Um, some of us have been shocked if we've seen like that, how many residents actually do live in poverty or have to make ends meet. And that was shocking to a lot of us and it's, and it's always been and hopefully will not always be, but it's just a real uh, reality and, you know, consistency around that. Like if, for instance, if $100 is a big savings, then $100 is a big increase. You know, it, it goes both ways. Um, things like, you know, for instance, with, with housing, I really appreciate all of the comments that I've heard about housing. Um, you know, gentrification is is real here like it is everywhere else. We have, you know, areas that people, you know, before no one wanted to be. Um, and only those that were considered lesser than would be. And now these are areas people want to be, you know, and there's, you know, issues around what kind of housing can go in this type of place or. So I think like everything else, turning, going from a, a dream to uh, a goal, how do you get there? How do you get from uh, point A to point B is also, you know, having having a plan. So doing that together would um, require a lot less of, you know, I wants and more we will achieves. And, you know, really having to pull upon all of our individual strengths and we'd have to really know what they are rather than assuming what they are um, and being realistic um, about those priorities. So. Thank you. So, um, starting with uh, 
some actionable uh, strategies. It goes back, first one goes back to what I think a number of other people have said that we need to secure the funding from state and federal government and from our higher education partners to achieve what we need to achieve as a community to serve all, including um, people connected with the colleges and university and our residents who are not connected to the college and universities so that we are a thriving community that meets all needs that are identified um, for those groups. The second thing is, and this is um, just a recognition that what does set Amherst apart from other communities and what sets us apart from other communities is the fact that we have a university and two highly respected colleges and that we need to accept that their presence is what makes us not just any other town in Massachusetts or New England, but something that is really unique and special. And um, so we need to, under, to establish a common vision with the university and the colleges about a community that enables residents and institutions to thrive and to support each other. And I think we need to encourage ourselves and our community to move away from uh, rhetoric that uh, is a blame or um, tries to uh, place, uh, place barriers between us and our institutions. And the third one is to continue to develop mechanisms that uh, find out what the needs and desires are of our residents and a way um, for them to um, help us to set the priorities because we represent them. Uh, we represent our residents and we need to incorporate them in our prioritization process. So obviously a criteria is going to be what would achieve those goals, but then I'll list some um, other, or choose those strategies, but I'll set some other um, priorities, just three or four quick ones. Um, will the effort um, develop the, re is this an effort that will develop resources that enable us to achieve our goals and strategies? Are we focusing on things that we can accomplish as a municipality? Um, can we assure that the financial and time resources required to achieve a strategy are consistent with the benefits? And the fourth is, will the strategy advance our master plan, our climate and action, our climate action plan, and our diversity, equity, and inclusion? Feels good to follow you, Andy, because we have some similarities. Um, there are lots of things I could agree to, but I think I, I just want to uh, state one if we want to uh, change things, we really need to take diversity seriously. And that means many things. Uh, and one of those things is finding creative cl collaborations. Um, and that can be as simple as. Uh, the rec department um, uh, director meeting with a counselor or two counselors about um, seeds that would build eventually to a youth empowerment center. What can we have now? What can we create now? Not the final thing because we're not there, but what can we create now? Uh, Andy, I think it was you who said a common vision. Um, for me, a common vision means I need to find commonality with all the residents in town. That means I have to make students uh, part of that process, both high school, probably elementary school kids too, because they're incredible with in terms of ideas. But uh, our college students, both undergraduate and graduate, need to be involved in town committees and town processes. But I want to sit 
very closely on, on the on idea of creating, and this is something we can do now, community dialogues that are a little bit different than how we do it. And I'm going to jump to the creation of the mobile market because that it, it hit um, so many important issues. Number one, it was um, people who were uh, facing food insecurity were invited to gather around a meal on a regular basis and begin to talk about their needs. But they weren't the only ones there. The other people who were there were some other members of Amherst, uh, both BIPOC and uh, non-BIPOC people who weren't facing food insecurity. So there was a coming together. There were homeless people there that I knew from volunteering at the Survival Center. Everyone was there to share a meal, and they began talking about the issues that they were facing. And through the looking at that, they began to create a structure that eventually evolved into the mobile market, where members of this community were even hired by the market to help run it and organize it. That there was connection with local farmers. There were students involved in this. So that's a different way. How many times have we offered a meal or gone to a community? Because the start of that and the invitation to the meal went to the apartment complexes on East Hadley Road, where people were who might have this need. And years ago, Lynn and I, you know, it failed in some ways, but we were, uh, we engaged the community with support from the staff around moving the DPW to um, off um, Sydney Street, I think, Stanley Street. And it failed, but it didn't fail in terms of building community and building uh, bridges between the, the people who regularly talk, and we all know who they are and <laughs> in town uh, around any issue, and people who don't regularly talk. And, and if we're gonna create a real community, then we have to see the humanness of each person. If we had uh, dialogue sessions with students, maybe they could begin to understand some of the problems that neighborhoods face. We don't do that. Yeah, we do in some ways in terms of staff and a community, you know, Bill Laramie and, you know, but we don't reach out without having some predetermined idea of how this meeting should go or what should come out of it. And what I'm proposing is an ability to, to have a dialogue where we don't know what the result would be. And I think that's scary for most of us. Um, you know, well, there are lots of things here, but, I think that we need to change our idea what uh, inclusivity is, what diversity is, um, what equity is. Um, anyway. Okay, we have less than five minutes, so I'm gonna try and go fast. No. <laughs> um, so I, maybe the, a big rubric for me is, do our actions and our policies and setting priorities, does it help to advance sustaining and expanding our permanent year-round population. The universities and the colleges will ensure that, which is an integral part of our community, that we have college and university students. But I think if we look at that we want to have a, between the two humps, and, and I guess the second hump, including retirees as well, that this be a welcoming place for, for me, right, for us to continue to live and be able to afford to live in. But, you know, when we're looking at expanding and sustaining our year-round population. And we get to, um, you know, we need to build schools, we need a senior center, a youth center, a vibrant downtown, that all falls within that. Um, and can taxes be at a level that people can afford to live here? Can we provide um, rental and um, home ownership opportunities for people that will, you know, are here and want to stay here for years? And I think, you know, if that is how we approach zoning, to me, that would be very helpful. Um, I don't think that all changes are changes for the better. So I'm always concerned, well, we need, we, we need to do something. No, we need to do something that helps us achieve the goals that we want to achieve and not just 
have changed. And I think part of supporting all the resources, schools, community center, what we want for our community without driving, I mean, we don't want changes that drive people out of town. And certainly as it becomes more expensive to live here and as, you know, we're gonna lose population. And I, in addition to federal, state and the support that has been, um, others have articulated, I think the pilots and the strategic agreements with the university and um, Amherst College are key. I went to college in a neighboring state. They set up a $10 million endowment for the public schools in that city. And I don't see why we can't have that here in Amherst. Okay, uh, starting with criteria, um, some of the criteria that we sent in advance uh, when I was thinking through some of those questions, um, it, it really was sort of a, a methodical way to apply a lens. Um, and then in one of our retreat planning meetings, um, it came up that we also have, like, for example, a couple counselors, I think, are working on access to reproductive care by law around that. And it got me thinking about the difference between what we stand for and what we stand on and how as um, a council, we have um, political and social values and how as a community, we have political and social values. And so how do we move those things forward versus our streets that need to be and our potholes and our sidewalks and all of the other things. So I just wanted to think about, it sort of loosened my mind up to thinking about criteria um, and considering what we stand for and what we stand on so that we can balance those um, priorities that we have. And then in terms of priorities, um, I was hoping that we would come away from here with some sort of sense of <laughs> uh, what priorities that are on this list. So I do wonder if we need to have a follow-up working session to sort of take the priming that we did here and then actually get to these uh, important measures that are already in play and consider what we want to focus the rest of our term on um, to move those things forward. All right, so we're going to end on time. Uh, I, I promised that we would um, explore the five senses and we're um, down to the last uh, sense, which is taste. And I'm going to um, ask, uh, either take and if you don't like chocolate I apologize but take one anyway because there's a there's a there is a method to my madness so there's dark and milk chocolate going around so I just want to summarize what I heard which I think um, will help guide you towards the next section which is will be sort of determining what those specific priorities that you want to work on and so I heard from that round that you want to be informed by your goals and your master plan, that you want to look at the urgency of the issue. You're going to examine your authority. You're going to review uh, the staff time. You want to be consistent about the actions that you take. Uh, you want your um, plan to be collaborative, achievable, that it reflects the needs of the community. You want to exhibit f fiscal responsibility. You want to emphasize diversity, equity, and inclusion. You want to think about and emphasize the needs of the year-round population here. And recognize, I will say that the council has an obligation beyond just the legal obligation. So that, I think, is Michelle's point around what the council stands for and stands on. So all of those things came out from that round and they're recorded here and we'll be sharing with them with you as you move forward into uh, the next stage, which is really sort of making concrete decisions about your priorities. I think that, I hope you will agree with me that you had a really fruitful day um, and that it uh, really met the needs that you um, had 
or what we envision that you really need at the time to spend time with those rules and motions. So um, if you opened your Dove chocolate, there's a little message there, and we're just going to end with that little message. So has someone? Oh, oh. I, I also kept track of the list of criteria, both that folks sent ahead of time and during the meeting. So we were hoping that this would be a tool that you can use to start thinking about when we're making referrals and so forth, what criteria are we using? So I'll be sharing that as well. So I know that there's chocolate that has been opened up. But we'll just Live, love. It's your call. Hands are meant to be held. Mine's long. Every moment matters, including this one. I didn't take a chocolate. You're supposed to take it regardless of whether you're going to eat it or not. Live your life every day with no regrets. It'll be worth it. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Keep life moving forward. Looking backward is only for time travelers. I keep getting the same one as other people. Um, I had the same one as Dorothy. Live your life every day with no regrets. It'll be worth it. I have a write a letter to a friend and send chocolate with it. Your vibe attracts your tribe. So thank you guys very, very much. And I hope you found it. I have to formally adjourn the meeting, but before I wanna start by thanking our two facilitators. Yeah, wait till you see it. I'm going to let them decide if they want to swap, but this is for Paul for being the runner for today. <laughs> and for all the basketball games you still have to watch. So, and also, I want to thank Michelle for making us do this. <laughs> Thanks. You're adjourned. <laughs>